it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Um, today I am sharing a project with you that I have cased from um, uh, another YouTuber called uh, Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Um, I will try and find her details and link those in the blog post which is linked immediately below. Um, but this is her amazing um, and really not complicated um, apologies for the damage there. That's we'll come to how that happened. Um, this is her amazing box. It's like a little um, kind of classy handbag, really. Um, and apparently, it's based on a fruit box uh, that is used in China, which is where she lives. Um, so this is the opening, and here is this amazing box. Um, so. Let's get started. It is not as complicated as it may first appear, um, but it is gorgeous. It's really solid as well because of the way it's manufactured, um, or I say manufactured, constructed. If you press on it, it's it's really quite solid and it's got a nice double base. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, we need two sheets of um, card cut at eight and a quarter by 11 inches. So uh, using a four, you need to trim a um, tiny little bit off the edge um, and then a reasonable bit off the end, but you need two of those. Um, I stupidly scored them both. I was going to score one. I will go over the scoring so that you've got it. Um, and then two sheets of designer series paper or two pieces cut at six and seven eighths and three and one eighth. Um, now I'm using dapper denim as my card for this version and the Myths and Magic uh, Specialty Designer Series Paper for the Designer Series Paper. Um, in this version I use Pink Pirouette and uh, Petal Passion. Yes, Petal Passion. And I used the uh, Smoky Slate Gingham Ribbon um, for the handle. Um, so this is all retiring. Uh, and this is retiring, as is the ribbon I'm going to use, which is the Berry Burst finely woven ribbon. So um, it's a bit of a let's use up the um, retired, retiring stuff project. So, um, say so it's not as complicated as it sounds slash looks, um, but, it, but you do need to kind of do things in an order. So, bringing in my scoreboard so that you can see it all, um, I will go over one set of the scores. So, with the long side at the top, you score at three and a half and ten and a half inches. Then, making sure that this small tab is at the bottom, you turn it and score again at three and a half and six and three quarters. Then putting this smaller piece, smaller as in narrower, at the top, you score down at uh, no, no, you do that. Sorry. Then you put the tab at the top. Oh, brain dangerous. So then you put the narrow tab at the top, and you score at three quarters of an inch to the second score line. So that's why you need to put that one in first. Then you put that at the top um, and you score at one inch and two and three quarter inches. OK, so you can at this point mark here um, the one and three quarter mark. Um, what I'm probably going to do is just mark it there, which I haven't done on the other one. So let's do that. So you just want that middle point between these two, which is one and three quarters. So let's, I need to keep my scoring tool, but get rid of the board. So this I have not yet done. I mean, on this version. Uh, so with the, with the short edge towards you. Oh yes, like this, sorry brain, dangerous. I've written it all down and got confused. So with the short edge towards you and with all of these score lines here, uh, you want to make a mark um, from the left hand edge. 
sorry, left hand score line, so this score line here, you want to measure down one and a quarter inches, which is uh, one, two, three, four, which is just there. And you want to do the same again on this uh, score line here. So one and a quarter inches, one, two, three, four, it's there. And then you join that and that with a score. And you need that to be a reasonably good score. Now I've got a padded surface so I can get a reasonable score there. And then this with this mark here. And that's what's going to give you this shaping here. Then, and this is why we needed this mark, uh, we need again to measure one and three quarter inches in. So one, two, three, four is there. And then, because we can now join these two lines up, we are going to score between the three quarter inch mark and the two and a quarter inch mark. So there, okay. Right, so we then need to do the same again on this one. So, one and a quarter inches down is there, and one and a quarter inches down is there. Join these up. So I hope you are enjoying filling your basket with lots of product that is going to retire. Just realised, can you see? Ooh, I'm off camera, no! Can't see that bit, so I'm just joining that with the one and a quarter inch mark here. And then I need to measure in one and, a, one and three quarter inches, and then measure between the three quarters and the one uh, and the two and a quarter mark. Right, so yes, I hope you're filling your baskets with lots of retiring projects, uh, products. Um, I'm just gonna burnish all of the lines that are what I would call complete from one side of the card to another. Some of them are not yet complete, so we can't burnish them. Um, this is the most perfect time of the year to fill up your baskets for a number of reasons. A, if you don't do it now, you're gonna lose out on some retiring products that you won't be able to get come the 1st of June. Also, if there are any bundles that you want, um, if you don't get them before the 1st of June, then uh, you'll have to pay full price. You won't get the 10% off because although any stamp sets and dies that are carrying over, or dies and punches that are carrying over will still be available, they will not be available at the bundle discount. So get them now. And if you get them before the end of April and use my um, online store and my hostess code, then I'll enter you into a draw to win a full set of the Many Marvelous Markers as per the catalogue. So the, uh, I can't remember how many you get, but it's, you, you know, the £99 Many Marvelous Markers. I have a set to give away. So if you would like to be entered into that draw, shop with me and, um, and use the hostess code. Uh, you will get 25, uh, for every £25 you spend in April, you will get an entry into the draw. Um, so, and I'll do some more on that in a bit. So, having scored all our marks, we need to do some cutting away. So, I'm actually going to do this from the back. Now, I hope you can... Can you see... Hopefully, we've got this square here and this... I say square, this rectangle here and here. Those we need to get rid of. Now, as ever, I like to cut away from the um, side of the score line that I'm getting rid of. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to include the score line in what we're cutting away effectively. So yes, so if you use the hostess code for every £25 you spend, in April, and if you put more than one order in, I'll add them all up and divide by 25. You'll get an entry into my draw, uh, and then I will draw that um, at the beginning of May uh, and let you know um, who has won. 
keep these if you use if you um i was gonna say if you put no contact but if you put no contact you probably won't use my um hostess code um right i'm gonna get rid of this bit and this bit and then i'm gonna cut up here um this is fairly standard making a box stuff so get rid of that and i'm going to just wedge in a little bit there so that it's going to be neater when we come to stick it all together and again um, now if you are spending 150 pounds or more you can become your own host and i would urge you to do so however it does mean therefore that you won't be using the hostess code which is going to be the key as far as getting entries into my drawer is concerned so uh, now this i'm going to cut to this side of the score line and then just wedge very slightly here and here um, so i'm still going to enter you if you have um, made a, a purchase through my online store um, but as the key to this is using the hostess code um, if your order is over £150, you will get an, an entry, but it will only be one entry. Um, just to be clear on that. So yes, and I have to say, I have got quite a number of people who have already taken, the adva uh, uh, the, um, taken advantage of that. Sorry, my brain has gone. Uh, so those little bits we don't need. Um, now... Here I'm going to wedge very, very fractionally either side of this mark that I've got um, where we scored. Now I may have to extend that. Um, we'll find out in a moment. And you can see I've just got this very shallow, shallow diamond. Then this I can now burnish. And get rid of that. So let's do the same again. So... We're going to cut away these two bits either side of the bit that we sort of half scored. The other thing to remember is that next month as a customer, you will be able to purchase three bundles from the Share What You Love suite. Each of them will have some free um, product. Remember, we want these two bits. Uh, some free product included in the bundle. And depending on which one you get, depends on exactly what you get as free product. Um, they could each of them be put into a starter kit. Um, if you are thinking about joining up, now would be a perfect time to do so uh, for a whole host of reasons. A, you can put the largest bundle in which gets you it costs 118 pounds but because the starter kit allows you to put 130 pounds of product into your starter kit you'd still have some left over and you're going to get something it's about 27 pounds of free product in that bundle anyway so in total you could get 150 155 pounds of product for 99 pounds and you wouldn't have to pay postage because that's included in the starter kit anyway. So perfect time. You also, that's that, right, we just need to cut this piece. Um, you also will get to order, uh, pre-order from the annual catalog if you sign up before the end of May. Well, actually you need to sign up in early-ish May because in the UK you have to have a cooling off period before you can place your next order. Um, that's a legal issue nothing to do with stamping up as such so that's what we're getting yeah and we've got two of those uh so i'm going to put the designer series paper on now because it's going to be easier to do that um so uh yes so you get to pre-order from the annual catalog and you would also get to pre-order from the autumn winter catalog um, because of the way the um, the process works if you if you sign up at the beginning of a quarter you don't have to meet the very achievable minimum um, sales or purchase depending on how you look at it to targets until the end of your next full quarter so your first quarter whenever you sign up is free 
uh, it sort of doesn't count from that point of view. Uh, so yes, pre-order for two catalogues. Oh, I didn't burnish that line. There we are. Um, so yes, perfect, perfect, perfect time to sign up. Um, and obviously I would be delighted if you would like to join my team. We've got um, lots of people joining now, so uh, it's it's growing really fast. I can't believe how quickly it has started to grow, uh, which is lovely. Uh, all sorts of people, some people who are hoping to make it as a little business um, and help fund their um, crafting habit and some who just want to have the discount and help that fund their crafting habit. Um, and everyone's welcome. We don't, you don't have to make this into a business. You can just be your only customer. Um, and if you don't meet the quarterly minimums, you just drop and become a customer again. So it's, it's really a no, um, no stress thing to do. Right, so we're going to join all this together. So I'm going to use some fast fuse, which is currently still in stock. And I do want that to be reasonably close to that crease. And again here. And just run the second piece, just so it's a really, really good um, seam. And then just line those up. And then, ooh, that's not brilliantly lined up. That's better. Turn it all over and then fold over with the sticky um, side up and then just fold that over to get that nice, neat seam. Uh, I've got a bit of fast fuse showing, but that rubs off quite nicely at this stage. Right, okay. So, um, next thing to do, I'm going to fold it so that we get a flat base both inside and out. Uh, rather than having the seams showing. Where are we on time? 17 minutes, so I need to get a little bit of a wiggle on. So um, it doesn't matter which you decide to have this front at the back, you can decide that in a moment. So you want to push one flap in, and I would urge you to actually push it in. And then on the two flaps, side flaps, we're going to add some liquid adhesive, and we want to try and get that as close to these edges as possible. And then just fill in and don't go mad you don't need to go mad with with Tombow and then again that's not let's push that a bit better that's better and again we want to go to the edge and into the middle and then fold those in and push your inner flap, as it were, your, your inside base down and just get that nicely attached. It will get some more chance to do that. And then add, just push that and then add some more adhesive. And again, we want to concentrate on getting it close to these edges so that it's a nice and neat base and fill in and fold over. So tidy that away and then just pop that down like that. Now this is the moment of truth. So you need to kind of encourage these corners to just go with that um, score line. You don't want to go mad, but you just want to encourage them. So a little bit of pinching. That's it. And here. Then, say moment of truth, you want to push your two, there we go, 
those two bits in and then you can have a proper make sure that these go in that this is coming out and just make sure that everything is nice and snug in here you may need to just extend that score line uh, that cut line a wee bit now I did on my original and I think I might on this having established that everything was snug I've added fuse just hmm, how can I show you I've added fuse here so I'm just going to do that again just be careful that you don't um, you don't glue too close to the slit uh, but I just thought it was going to make that whole thing a little bit neater and give it a bit more stability there we go Right, so, um, as I said, we've got two 10-inch pieces of ribbon. Um, I've also got the three-quarter inch hole punch. And I'm going to, from each of these little scraps, uh, just punch out a three-quarter inch circle. Waste not, want not. And then, whoops, with the one-eighth inch um, handheld punch just punch those in the, roughly in the middle I mean it's a you could try and find the middle good luck um, but I'm doing this as a bit of a by eye and then um, there we go they're not perfect then this is where I went slightly wrong last time uh, not wrong wrong just not beautiful so I'm going to measure in an inch and a half from each edge and just add a tiny little mark and I need to do that front and back easier said than done on paper that's got glitter embossing on it but we'll manage. And then again, with your um, handheld punch, I say we'll manage. <coughs> oh, no, that is the mark. Uh, you want to go in, but not too far. And this is where I went wrong before. You want to go down about half an inch um, and just see where that is on your punch. Uh, so you can do it again and punch. That's better. Uh, and then the same again here. over here and over here and then the last thing we need to do is feed the ribbon through this hole and I'm hoping I will I've got seven minutes left um, feed that through there and into your box and I say seven minutes left that's seven minutes before my um, camera decides it's really bored um, and just turns off because that's what it does uh, right it's quite a good discipline particularly on these longer projects um, to have something that's reminding you that you could bore for Britain so that's that one, pull that tight and then do the reverse. So again, into a disc. A finer ribbon would obviously be easier. Um, now on the original project from Mixed Up Craft, she uh, used brads to do this and she had hid the, um, the ribbon underneath these circles, but I don't have any brads, um, so I'm not using them. I'm just punching holes, and it's fine. So there we are, that's that one handle. And then the same again, this side. Uh, 
but I do urge you to have a look at her projects. They are amazing. Um, I think I might be borrowing one or two. I will obviously credit her, but she does do some amazing, amazing projects. Um, so well worth a look. There we go. And last one. Now you could, if you want, add some glue behind these. I don't think it's necessary because it is quite a snug fit. Um, so I think that's just adding a step too far, certainly in my head. Um, and there we go. So pop that together and obviously you can add a tag and all that good stuff if you so desire. Um, let's just get that to pop out and that to pop out. That's nicely in. So we've got V, this one, and this one. Aren't they pretty? And they're just made out of card. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Love it. Um, I would never have been able to come up with this on my own. I think it is just phenomenal. So thank you to um, Mixed Up Craft for that. Uh, you can see I'm just titivating. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you need any of the products, please do, 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 please hop over to my online store if you're in the UK. Um, as I say, I've got this prize draw going. I'm trying to get myself on the incentive trip to go to Greece, um, which I need to get a few more sales going. Um, so any assistance you can give me on that would be wonderful. Um, if you want any more information or uh, have any questions, um, either leave a comment below or hop over to my um, blog, which again is linked below, and leave me a comment there or drop me an email. Um, all my uh, social media links, including a link to my online store, are in the description bar below. There's one URL that's a linked tree URL, which if you click on that, you'll get all my um, social media links. So thank you very much indeed for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, bottom right hand corner. Um, and I will see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.